connected and I think we'll begin. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Reduce your carbon footprint with minimal application in dyeing and finishing, sponsored by Waco. In this webinar, we'll delve into new strategies that support reducing CO2 emissions by 50% within seven years, a global imperative. The textile industry faces the challenge of significantly cutting resource consumption while maintaining product quality. Discover how innovative solutions from Waco and Rotospray offer precise non-contact systems fostering economic efficiency and carbon reduction in the textile and textile dyeing and finish, finishing processes. Our speaker today, Jayanta Sanyal, who is the Head of Technical Sales and Processes for the textile industry at Waco, has developed and implemented a new sustainable process using minimal rotor spray application systems in dyeing, finishing and coating. Also covering technical sales for Waco and rotor spray systems and processed to support and end end customers in dedicated global area. Just a little housekeeping before we begin. If you have any questions during this presentation, please use the Q&A Q &A question box in your Zoom control panel. This means that the questions are not visible to the other users and therefore won't be a distraction. We'll, we'll, do, we'll answer these questions at the end of the presentation. And with that, over to the, over to the webinar. Over to you, Jayanta. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, from Central uh, Europe, good afternoon. And it can be in Asia, good evening, or in America, it's good morning. But welcome to today's webinar on minimal application, carbon reduced, sustainable spray, dyeing and finishing on the platform of WTIN. Main objective today is to discuss about together towards a more sustainable textile industry. Our company, Waco, is Whiteman and Conrad GmbH and company KG which is having uh, more than 70 years of experience with 140 employees worldwide, a high quality German manufacturing, machine manufacturing organization, ISO 9001-2015 certified company, and now it's integrated with Rota Spray, which was taken over in the year of 2021. It's a 100% family owned business, in the second generation, and Mr. Whiteman and Mr. Conrad are the family for this business, but presently, Mr. Toby Ashore and Mr. Whiteman are the managing director and managing partners. So we are in different locations. Our main headquarter is in Germany, and Together with Germany, we have different subsidiaries and uh, different uh, partners or agencies globally. So in this map, we can you can see that we have Waco Latin America, Waco North America, Waco UK, Waco Italy, and Waco Germany. These are our five offices where Waco South Africa is having manufacturing capacity also in Brazil. And we have at different countries, we have our agencies. Around 6,500 installation already in Waco fluid application system, which are different industries like paper or board, printing, tissue, plastic film, batteries, foil, textile, technical textile, home textile, apparel, geo uh, textile, etc non-oven wood panel boards composites. Around 70,000 installation of Waco powder application system is extremely popular today in the printing industry, plastic film industries, and also glass industry. Now, today we are discussing about textile. So let's focus on textile. So global textile industry 
is one of the longest and most complicated industrial chain in the manufacturing sector. It involves natural and synthetic fibers, machineries, dyes and chemicals, apparel industries, retail and service sector, waste management and treatment. So the whole process can be uh, lined in this way that raw material is converting into the production to natural production of natural and synthetic fibers. Then from the fibers, yarn filaments and fabrics. When the fabric is made, then it's going for wet processing or wet treatment, which is pre-treatment, dyeing, printing and finishing. And then finally is going to garment manufacturing. If we see that each stage of these manufacturing processes, it consumes some amount of dyes, additives, auxiliaries, and water. And at the end of the day, the result is the emission, consumption, and waste generation. Now, this wet treatment is the most polluting segment of the entire manufacturing process. It takes the maximum amount of water, energy, uh, chemicals, different auxiliaries, and it's polluting everything in uh, our surroundings, water, soil, air, everything. So what should be our target then? Target for future weight processing technologies will be minimum use of resources, that is minimal application, which is raw material, energy, water, dyes, and chemicals, waste and pollution reduction, less waste production and drainage, use of renewable resources, eco-friendly chemicals and dyes application. And then the most important is rethinking the production steps. We are habituated of our very old conventional process. So now we need to think smartly so that we can achieve the goal of reduction of 50% carbon dioxide in coming seven years. Today's continuous dyeing and finishing process, what we, are, we all are very much habituated is the pattern process. The characteristics is 100% penetration, flexible in chemicals, simple cleaning and easy to use. That's why it's so popular. But there are several concerns. Low process speed due to high pickup, 70, 80, 90 to 130% pickup. High drying energy cost because of more water going together with the fabric. High auxiliary consumption, tailing and listing. Listing means center side variation potential. If the uh, padder uh, roller is not very much uh, equal. No single side application is possible. No different application per side possible in a single passage, which is very important that when we need two different type of application in two different sides of the fabric, this cannot be done in the padder process. And relatively low concentration of active substances. So because we know that there is this much percentage pickup is going on, we always keep the recipe as minimum as possible to control the cost. Downtime during batch and lot change is always high in the padding process. So the themes and steps can be divided into three different steps. That means working principle, equipment, and process. Working principle is rotating atomizer. How it looks, it looks like a disc where uh, it is rotating at a very high speed and it's generating the micro droplets here, which is going towards the material surface. It's in competition with dipping and squeezing, crease roll technology, foam applicator, vacuum system, knife coating, nozzle or ultrasonic and overpressure atomizer. Every type of alternate process had its pros and cons. We are concentrating on rotating atomizer process. So let's discuss on rotating atomizer. Nearly a pressureless liquid is feeding at the center of the disc. 
and the disc is rotating at a very high speed. And then the liquid filament is pinching off in the close-up range of the efflux edge and creates micro droplets. And these micro droplets, we target to make a equal drop size distribution, which is monodispersed. Let's go for the next step, which is equipment, which is Sigma Protec Neo Rota Dyer or Rota Finisher. You can see in this photo that we have at this moment popular in the market, Weco Sigma, Weco Protec, Weco Neo and Rota Dyer Twin. We are also making another type of applicator, but for the fluid application system, these are the most commonly used applicator globally. Weco Sigma is the oldest one, which is very popular for moisture management, softening, functional finishing. It can be installed in sun fertilizer, compacting line, calendar, festoon steamer, or standard. Weco Protec has been developed to spray the hazardous chemical. And this is encapsulated with the suction, uh, suction possibilities that the minimum quantity of aerosols that is not going to the fabric is sucking out from the encapsulated uh, cell and going outside of the factory premises. Weco Neo has been developed mainly for the denim application, which was, uh, it, it began uh, for the dyeing application, but thereafter it is also popular for finishing, which is again encapsulated. And uh, it's having an exhaust system, which is optional. And it is it can be installed in stainter or in a pad steam line or pad dry line, and also in slasher uh, dyeing range of the denim uh, yarn dyeing lines. And rota dyeing or rota spray is rota dyer twin. This is mainly manufactured for the dyeing process. This is very successfully running at different uh, places for sulfur, vat, reactive pigment, indigo dyeing process on slasher, stainter, pad steam, and pad dry ranges. Now we come to the process. There are several processes involved in uh, spray application, which we cannot explain everything today. And uh, I would like to have your questions in future that I would be happy to explain different type of process. Weco and Rota Spray continuously working on process development on the focus, how we can make the textile wet processing a more sustainable one. So we are active in outdoor sportswear, workwear, denim, teddy towel, carpets, home textile, technical textile, apparel textile, and non-oven industries. Roto spray processing has the following production characteristics. Contact-free application. That means no bath contamination. We are not touching the fabric. We are spraying the chemical or the fluid from a distance. <clears throat> no tailing, listing or substantivity issue. Adjustable penetration. So you can see that normally the padder is doing the 100% penetration. But in our case, we can really control the amount of penetration. If somebody wants just to have it in surface, he can only have only surface. And gradually it can go inside, inside, inside to more and more amount of absorption by the material and then can make a similar result like a pattern. Weco single passage technology, which is uh, in one passage, uh, you can apply one type of chemical or both type of chemical in two different sites. Uh, low pickup, therefore low drying energy, enabling high speed production, fast batch or changeover or lot change, easy to use and excellent reproducibility. Now, 
since there is no substantivity issue or there is no uh, need to wait till the equilibrium is coming, the point is that whatever recipe you are making, if you are making the recipe correctly from the beginning to the end, the amount the fabric is absorbing is not changing at all. So there is always a reproducibility and there is no possibility of telling. Weko in the finishing application. So there are different types of finishings are possible. Hand fill modification, that means softening, dye fixation, over dyeing or tinting, suavility improver, easy care finish, resin or flat finish, soil repellent, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, anti-static, antimicrobial, antiviral, and many more type of finishing. The chemistry, has to be water-based and it should be sprayable. So Weko in textile finishing. In sunforizing, high precise pre-moistioning, compacting. In compacting also we need to do a, a moisture application or also in sunforizing we need to do a pre-moisture application so that we always get a stable and consistent shrinkage value. In calendaring, festoon steamer normally for uh, single phase reactive printing, we need a lot of urea for as a humectant to reduce the urea consumption if we apply a measured minimal quantity of water in the opposite side of the fabric, we have seen that we can reduce the amount of urea used by 70 to 80%. In standard frame for functional finishing or remoistening, relaxed dryer, and also in coating line. Now we can see that uh, some of the example here that uh, Weko Sigma in uh, sunforizing, this is the place where uh, Sigma is installed. Then Weko in festoon steamer, Weko in raising or pitching or emerizing machine. This is one of the uh, very important application here that normally some delicate fabric, if we give a mechanical action, the strength is going down. To improve the pliability, we have seen that a controlled amount of about 15%, 10 to 15% moisture maximum, if we can apply uh, to the fabric before it's entering into the more uh, emerizing machine, the fabric strength is improving. It's not destroying the tear strength or the tensile strength of the fabric. Now, uh, we can also see that uh, that we have this 50 to 70 percent is the uh, pickup application for the um, normal pattern with 60 to uh, 110, 120 percent for the nits, where our target is a minimal application of 20 to 25 percent. How it looks, it looks like this, that uh, is now it's a polyurethane, low viscosity is getting sprayed on the front side of the fabric to making a glossy finish. And if you want, you can also apply some of the pigments inside of the polyurethane or polyacrylate and can spray to change not only the gloss of the uh, surface, but also you can change the color or the tint of the fabric. Integration in existing standard frame, that means a retrofitting. How a retrofitting can be done? Now this is weight on weight application and in weight on weight application, we know that we always need two uh, patterns. The first pattern is for the water equilibrium or a water equalizing pattern and second pattern is for the chemical application. So there is always a problem in the second pattern for the tailing, concentration change, several time cleaning of the second pattern when there is a lot change or color change. And if we can replace the second pattern by Waco spray applicator, either one side or both side, then 
<clears throat> there is a enormous savings in the downtime and then you can run color by color because we are not touching the fabric so the uh, the solution is not getting contaminated so less downtime less chemistry use less water use and less drying energy use per meter of fabric if you consider this depending on different type of fabric the percentage savings varies differently it can be 30 percent savings or it can be as high as 75 percent savings this always depends on what kind of fabric we are using if it is a knitted fabric or if it is a home textile fabric or it is a denim fabric it's totally different uh, behavior of the absorption so there is a definite improvement in the process some of our customers are claiming that they can produce their monthly production quantity in 25 days of running instead of 30 days of running in a month. Some small example, like softening of a uh, single jersey knitwear from a customers who were doing a uh, two pattern process at 35 meter per minute speed with 60% uh, pattern one pickup and pattern two pickup was 80% at ch eight chambers. So they are process always having a tailing, pattern overflow, and also a lot of time waste because of the changes. They changed it to work with Sigma. They gone from 35 meter per minute speed to 42 meter per minute speed, which is 20% increase in speed. And the second pattern pickup was reduced from 20% to 12%, which is a 72% reduction of the weight application and the uh, total drying energy per meter was saved by 20%. Another example for weight on weight finish, this is a 290 uh, GSM fleece knitwear fabric. The actual uh, process was 19 meter per minute speed with 22% second pattern pickup was reduced to 15% uh, of second uh, of WECO spray application and machine speed increased to 25 meter per minute, which is a 32% increase in speed and chemical pickup is reduced by 32%. Here, the main, main point is that, that depending on the GSM increase or decrease, there is a uh, practice in each knitwear company to change the recipe. Here, we can fix the recipe on certain grams per liter, and we have the possibility to increase and decrease the percentage application even up to a uh, quantity of 0.1%. That means if somebody wants from 15% to 15.1% or 15.05%, he can do this type of changes depending on the uh, outcome of the fabric as well as depending on the GSM of the fabric. Now, weight on dry application is uh, much more beneficial where we can reduce the pickup percentage to half of the quantity that is being applied by a better process. So you can see that there is a huge change of uh, 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 application uh, quantity as well as the stainless speed can be increased by double if there is no requirement of a heat setting. If there is a heat setting, then we have another another discussion coming in. So we can see that there is a uh, reduction of the chemistry used by 35 to 70% and water used by 45 to 85%. And if we are reducing the water to this amount uh, in, in a single passage, then the drying energy is proportionately reduce, reducing and which is really a strong step to reduce the carbon dioxide emission, which is our goal. Now, in wet on wet, wet on dry finish, I can also give a uh, real example that uh, there is a uh, customer in Europe who was doing hydrophilic and hydrophilic 
uh, hydrophobic in a single uh, fabric, which is 110 grams per square meter cotton fabric in two passage. Uh, one was tainter frame and one was coating line. After they installed the Waco Neo, they were able to run in one single passage, one side hydrophilic application, followed by intermediate dryer, and then a hydrophobic application in the front side. And they achieved around 43% increase in the speed with a reduction of 60% pickup and the drying energy reduced by 43%, which is quite achievable, achievable amount which any of you can achieve if you change the process from today's pattern process to tomorrow's spray application process. We come now to the dyeing application. There are several dyeing processes, and we every time we are developing a new process. So classical fabric dyeing and denim yarn dyeing is our first uh, objective where we can do the sulfur spray dyeing, PS2 reactive dyeing instead of PDPS, PSB35 reactive dyeing instead of CPB, uh, PS2 VAT dyeing, indigo spray dyeing, pigment spray dyeing, chemical oxidation, color fixation, and many other things. And classical fabric and denim yarn dyeing has these following possibilities. This is Dyeing and over dyeing can be done. Single side dyeing, you can see in this photo that the uh, lady is wearing a, a jeans where the back side is a different color than the front side. This is possible only by dyeing the back side without touching the front side. The, the front side denim look will not change, but the back side color is changed. This is very much required for the fashion uh, industry. And also this can be done without changing the backside color. That means it remains like a twill look of the denim. We just change the tone and the cast of the front color from one production lot in the undying so that the retailer or the brands can get minimum quantity of orders at different cost of the same fabric. It's also possible to do the e dyeing or space dyeing or vintage dyeing, salt and pepper dyeing, and also uh, is a laser friendly reactive dyeing is possible, which uh, can only be done in this process. In the rotor dye twin, there are four uh, uh, spray point, which you can see that the fabric is entering from the bottom and the first spray is here, second spray is in the right side, third spray again in the left side, fourth spray is in the right side. Then the fabric is entering to the second and uh, is inversing in, in, in this direction. And when it is going to the second uh, rotor rotor unit, then the opposite side is getting the four times of spray. So one, time of the fabric passing through a rotor dyer twin, it is getting eight time of spray totally, four in the front and four in the back, which is giving a uniform dyeing from selvage to selvage and from begin to end. Let's go for the yarn dyeing very quickly. Uh, so the benefits we can get is eliminating big dye baths and drainage, cost-efficient production. We can also do 500 meter with consistent color and reproducible color, minimal yarn waste, extremely fast job-to-job -job changeover, highest flexibility of the drying uh, dyeing process. That means we can do indigo sulfur reactive bad pigment, new dyeing effects directly on slasher. I will come back afterwards reduced washing and laser friendly by perfect green dye. In this photo, you can see that two, one green and one brown fabric, which is actually dyed by reactive dyeing. And this can easily be faded and the fashion can be developed by the laser destruction method. And in the right side, 
you can see a denim uh, garment where this is a e cut or space dyeing where the yarn is not completely dyed it is partially dyed by our technology you can make whatever uh, pattern you want and then you can fix that pattern and you can reproduce it, it always whenever you want and whenever you have a production order for that. We can see in the traditional slasher dyeing, we have six, 400 to 600 meter of waste. That means yarn loss for a recipe change or for a stop. And we are losing 8,000 up to 12,000 liter of dye bath, which is a lot of water going to the effluent treatment plant which is not only wasting the water, but also treatment cost is high and a lot of energy is required for treating this water. We thought in a different way that instead of going to this 8,000 to 12,000 liter of dye bath, we thought to do it in two rotor dyer, which is only taking 130 liter of the fluid. So where is eight to 10 or 12,000 liter of fluid? We wanted to reduce it down to 130 liter total. So at the end of the lot, you are losing only 130 liter of the uh, prepared dye bath. The, in the conventional slasher range, is uh, you can see that there is a work kill, different boxes, kind zone, then sizing, uh, pre drying, post drying, and then beaming. In a rota uh, spray process, we uh, do a retrofit. We put rota dryer here with a steamer. So, and the entire machine can be bypassed after a pre wetting, or otherwise, if it is a topping application. Uh, then we can do the indigo in the box and use the topping with the rotor dryer. Then we use a steamer and then we go for uh, skying followed by post wash and then sizing. So we can either uh, totally bypass the slasher range and directly going into the uh, dyeing section with the rotor dryer twin or we can do a very consistent topping by doing the bottoming by the dipping method and topping by spray method. Indigo spray dyeing is uh, in a technological study, but we have already developed. You can see here different type of yarn samples where 3.5% of indigo shade has been achieved for the light account and 2.4, 2.5% indigo shade achieved in a medium count to coarse count. And we are working on this project that in future, we need to improve the color yield and also the depth of the shade. In place of six to eight box, we only come down to two rotor dye twin. How it looks, it looks like this, uh, that uh, when it is sprayed, it's spraying uh, on the yarn sheet, then when it is entering into the steamer, then the color is changing to uh, parrot green, and then it is becoming completely blue when it is going to uh, aer aeration zone or the oxidizing zone. So topping, I already told that this is the place for the for the rotor dryer twin. And we can use after the topping going to the steamer. <clears throat> so again, the main benefit is that the topping bath is not getting contaminated with the indigo. And that is the reason that from the first meter to the last meter, your topping bath is always in the equilibrium uh, condition. So there is no waiting for 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 meter till you reach the equilibrium and you have a consistent shade. And also this is possible that whenever we develop two uh, non-compatible uh, dyeing in a bath, it's very difficult to maintain the consistency of the shade. But if we use by spray one side, one color, another side, another color, and let the final color develop 
inside the yarn, then this type of uh, equilibrium disturbance is not happening. You can get a different type of shade, but with the minimal waste of your yarn and also your second choice. Some examples of the indigo and the color denim. Uh, so what we said that this is the vintage look, which is not fully dyed yarn. And this is a clean look that is completely dyed yarn. This can only be changed by changing a parameter in the touch screen panel. And you can get this result in your running machine. Let's see how it looks. So the first video is showing that when we are spraying uh, droplets on the yarn sheet, not completely, then this type of vintage look is coming already in the yarn stage. You don't need to do a uh, destructive wash to get this effect. And when you do a complete uh, dyeing by changing the parameters, then you can get the complete coverage, which is a clean look of the fabric afterwards. In fabric, uh, over dyeing, uh, it's very popular today to have the over dyed fabric, but uh, over dyed fabric is uh, very, uh, uh, what I can say, it's uh, not uh, very profitable because you need to run a complete uh, batch with one color. So small orders cannot be accepted. You need a good quantity of the order if you run this in a pad steam line. But if you use the spray instead of padding, you can change the colors in a short length with a minimum wastage of your liquor. And also you can do one side application or both side application according to the requirement of the brands. And finally, at but the taste of the end customer. There is no chance of CSV or tailing, and there is no path contamination in this process. Now we come to classical fabric dyeing. The process of a pad, dry pad, steam is very common, where the pad uh, this is for reactive dyeing. The dye stuff is padded, then it is going to have a hot flu, uh, a very high energy consuming hot flu, then it is if it is a continuous process, then it is going to, again, second pattern where the chemical is padded, then is going to steamer and then is going to wash it. Now this uh, dryer is required because we cannot apply the uh, chemical chemicals, that means caustic and uh, the soda as directly on the dyeing bath because of the hydrolysis problem. And if we are not drying, then there are a lot of strip off in this pattern. And this is all the time making the tailing or the shade variation during the production run. So that is why some process is continuous, some process is discontinuous. Somebody is doing pad dry and then is doing pad steam. We thought on this process and since we are not touching the fabric, we developed the process which is known as pad spray steam. After padding, we spray the alkali and then we steam. Whatever reaction is happening is happening inside the steamer and then we go to the washing zone. So there is no need of adding huge amount of salt in the alkali bath because you don't need to re-exhaust the color back to the fabric. So there is a huge savings of salt application, then there is no need of a huge amount of hot flu in the process, which is reducing your energy by 100% in terms of this drying facility is eliminated. Now, water use is also going down and chemistry use is also going down to 40 to 60%. And the main important thing is that one of our customer is uh, declaring that in one year of running, they are reducing around 1,350 tons of carbon dioxide from one machine. This customer is changing from one line to other line 
uh, and already two lines are running and in 2024 2025 we are expecting that another line will also be converted now this is from no salt to low salt that means from the light shade to uh, medium shade is no salt and medium shade to dark shade is low amount of salt application so this is a salt reduced process some example of uh, different uh, uh, shades of reactive and vat which we can see in this photo we can see that in normal PDPS process, there is 1,440 tons of salt per year is getting consumed, which is 144 lorries. In PS2 process, 67% salt is reduced, which in medium said around 88% salt is reduced. And you see for the light to medium shade, there is no salt required that means 100 percent salt is reduced this is not only salt reduction that means procurement of salt reduction but also the effluent treatment this amount of salt if we reduce the effluent treatment the salt separation and the sludge removal is also going down drastically finally at the end of the day the owner of the company is only counting the profit there are some technological studies which I'm coming very fast. One is digital print preparation for reactive and pigment. Pad spray batch or CPB uh, pad spray batch, which is uh, our process in uh, state of cold pad batch. Indigo dyeing in slasher with higher color yield. Polyester fabric dyeing with dispersed dye, which is spray dry fix reduction clear process. And then polyester fabric dyeing with pigments, which is spray dye cure process, which is still running in production in one of the nominated uh, fabric manufacturer in Indonesia. Uh, but we are uh, working on it for further improvement in the process. How it works in a standard, you can retrofit uh, the uh, in this single side finishing system application for the applying of the primer chemistry. Uh, and uh, then you don't need to do the padding application to give 70, 80% pickup. You can apply with two Sigma rotoscarrier, one side application, very uniform, low amount, 25% maximum in one side, the primer application. And then you can dry it very fast. So your production speed is increasing. You can reduce your number of chambers or you can switch off the uh, burners of your unused uh, stainer to uh, get a higher production yield from the stainer. So after the fabric is dyed, then the fabric can be taken for the digital printing. Next uh, process is PSB35, which is a process where we can do the dye stuff and auxiliary can be uh, padded and uh, uh, alkali can be uh, sprayed. So you can see in the red that the dye stuff and auxiliary in this process is padded and the fixation alkali is sprayed or vice versa. Fixation alkali is padded and dye stuff or auxiliary are sprayed. Both are possible. The 35 is a 35 degree centigrade temperature where the maximum efficiency is coming and we can reduce the batching time from say 16 hours to less than eight hours, maybe four, four hours, five hours. If a uh, company is having the enough amount of washing uh, facility, then this type of process is not only increasing the production, but also utilizing the excess capacity of the washing. Otherwise, this can also be used for small quantity of the product development trials at different colors in this process. You don't need to make a lot of quantity or a full batch for making these trials and getting the shade. Once your shade is approved, your recipe is stored, you can reproduce in the production run 
without much headache. Then uh, this is a uh, objective. This is a uh, technology study again for a smaller slasher line for future for the color denim. So here, instead of a such a huge slasher line, we can reduce the length of the slasher line into this amount where we have one pre wetting two washing, one pre dyeing two rotor dyer, a steamer. And then we can have another uh, Weco application here, or if we need to do a uh, fixing, fixation or oxidation or something like that. So the process can be uh, shortened, a number of uh, the quantity of yarn waste is also reduced. And in case of tensile and lyocell, which is always very difficult to run in a long line, it can be further reduced to only one box process. And after that, a pre dyeing reduction of the wet pickup, then spray, then steam, and then finally going to sizing. So this we have to work together with other machine manufacturers in cooperation. But this is our idea for future, our idea for the denim manufacturers, how this will work in future. And this will really, really a very, very big step for the reduction of carbon dioxide emission and the use of water in the process. Now, last, we are coming to the polyester fabric dyeing. So this is uh, a data from Dyester, our very trusted partner, where in one is to six uh, material to liquor ratio, or one is to 10 material liquor ratio, which is a six bath process. One process needs 450 minutes, 15 minutes of production time. And uh, if you see, this is the first uh, bath, second bath, third bath, fourth bath, to six bath. So in case of 400 kilo of fabric is resulting into 14,400 liter of draining, which needs 415 minutes of production time. So if somebody is producing 2,000 kilo of fabric from one machine of one color, this needs 72,000 liters of draining, which needs around 35 hours of production time. We thought differently. We established a process differently with 20 to 35% minimal application by rotor dye twin we apply the chemistry, then we go to IR or NIR drying. The NIR drying also we are supplying to the market, which is beyond the scope of today's discussion. But if anyone is interested, he or she is welcome to me and I will explain how the NIR drying is working. So this is a very fast drying non-contact electrical dyeing, and then it's a cooling followed by the reduction clear and drying, the process is done. So uh, only thing is that uh, we can see the same 2000 kilo of fabric can be produced, including the consumption with only 10,200 liter of draining, which is 80% uh, less of water uses at 3.5 hours of production time, which is 90% increase in the production speed. <clears throat> For a, uh, for the cotton uh, fabric uh, pigment dyeing, we can also think in this way, or also we can think that IR and IR dyeing, we can do a pre-drying, non-contact fast, and then we can use a very short stenter for the curing process. So this can also be really done for the disperse, for the color development at 220 degrees centigrade, or this can be done for the pigment dyeing, for the fixation and polymerization of the uh, pigment chemistry together with the binder. Now, you all are uh, highly thanked to give your time today and to listen to me and our technology. We are committed all together towards a more sustainable textile industry. Our target is to reduce 
50% of carbon dioxide emission by the year of 2030. And the global leaders gave us a target to be carbon free textile manufacturing by 2050. I don't know how we can do it, but if we get the support from all of you, we will definitely jump into this impossible target to make it possible. Even if we cannot reach to 100%, if we reach to 80% or 90%, it is a huge work for our future generation, our children, our grandchildren, who will live in a better quality of Mother Earth. Thank you very much. Over to Eden. Thank you very much for that, Jayanta. That was really insightful. <clears throat> Uh, we've got some audience questions to go through, so um, I'll I'll start beginning the Q and A now, if that's okay. Where is Q and A? Sorry. One minute. Let me find out the Q. I have to do it from the laptop. Probably I cannot do it from here. Just one second, please. No problem. Excuse me. I, I, I can find the Q&A, yes. The first question I'm uh, at uh, answering that how do you prevent any blockage? Do you have any alarming system? Uh, more sugar, more sweet. So we have all possible systems. We have individual flow meters uh, for each throttle tips. Uh, the complete system definitely is costing more, but we already always have a alarming system. If there is a uh, reduction of the flow per disk, we get a visual alarm. And then there is a main concept is like this our throttle tips are different depending on the liquid so it has various type of tip diameter and we very scientifically we keep our throttle tip diameter higher than the mesh size of the filter so if there is any uh, undissolved particle in the solution it gets stuck in the filter first, and then it's coming in the circulation system to the uh, throttle tip. And that is why there is no choke up. Uh, frequency is very less. It's, it's not meaning that there is no chance. There can be a possibility of certain uh, choke up in the running machine, but we also have a <clears throat> pneumatic and hydraulic system that when water and air is coming immediately by <clears throat> through the circulation system to the block throttle and this is opening the throttle and making the process once again stable. So uh, this type of uh, control system, process control system is already incorporated into our solution. Next question. Uh, uh, rota sure. dyeing, how do uh, how to do with dispersed dyes fall? polyester fabric and polyester yarn. The question I can reply for a fabric, not for yarn, because polyester yarn cannot be dyed. Whatever yarn dyeing I explained is uh, for the denim slasher yarn dyeing. Polyester fabric can be dyed, which I already have shown the process. The process is application of dispersed dye on the fabric. Then it is going to a pre-dryer that can be IR or NIR drying, which has to be non-contact. And then it goes directly into the stainter where the stainter temperature will be 220 degrees centigrade 
where the sublimation dyeing is working. So the color is developing inside the fabric and then the fabric can be taken for washing, reduction, clearing and further drying. So this is the process actually for the polyester fabric dyeing. Next question is that uh, what is meant by pickup during the dyeing process? Everything is having a pickup because the amount of liquid that is taken by a textile material is pickup. If the fabric is having 200 grams per square meter and after the liquid application, when it is becoming 200, uh, 300 uh, grams per square meter, that means it is 50% pickup. So we must know as a dyer that what is the pickup in the process I'm not talking about the jet, uh, jet dyeing or I'm not talking ab about the jigger dyeing. I'm talking about the continuous dyeing process. So that pickup we must know and we have the possibility to reduce that pickup by controlled minimal application to the, through the spray applicator of rota uh, spray or Weku. Next. Question, can, you, can we work weight on weight? I already explained about weight on weight application. Mainly the knitters are using this weight on weight application for the finishing. Not only the knitting people, but also there are uh, oven peoples are also there. Home textile people are there. Uh, Terry towel people are there who are our customer. They are doing weight on weight application. And in the weight on weight application, as I explained, the second pattern is changed to Waco spray applicator. And instead of second pattern, we are using the non contact chemical spray from the spray applicator, either one side or both sides. So, weight on weight application is always possible. For cleaning of the rota spray dyeing, how is the wash and dye handled prior to the incorporation of the next dye? Uh, Weco as well as rota spray is incorporated with automatic cleaning cycle. This automatic cleaning cycle is the high pressure water is going inside and it uh, is uh, circulating for a pre-selected duration inside the roto carrier and then the after the completing of this cycle the uh, water uh, that means the polluted water is coming out and is going to the drain this can be repeated for one cycle two cycle three cycle depending on your intensity of the uh, change of color that means if you are changing from a, a yellow to a green you don't need to change a lot uh, wash a lot of times but if you are changing from black to light pink then you need quite a lot of time of this auto cleaning cycle to run as the same time there are some manual cleaning is also required by spray gun or by hand so this is unavoidable but both weco equipments and rota spray are equipped with auto cleaning uh, facilities for finishing it is very easy for dyeing depending on the change of the color you need to run the number of cycles do we have more time uh, lucy or i stop here i i or i take further questions as well um would you like to do a couple more would that Two be all more. right okay okay just a second let's see other questions uh Where do you see the state of this technology in 100% polyester fabric? It is in commercial scale or development scale. During my presentation, I already told that polyester dyeing using pigment with a very special chemistry of our partner Dyester is running commercially for one of the top most uh, sportswear brand 
in Indonesia. This is a nominated production and they are running 24-7 with pigment from very light to medium shades and also dark shade other than black. Black they have uh, developed and maybe in, in, in very near future, we can also develop the black shed depending uh, required by sportswear band for the shoe material. So this is already running commercially. The disperse uh, we have developed uh, in the lab scale, the whole technology. Now we are looking forward to install our first production line in a uh, facility with the cooperation of a bigger brand, but we need to wait for that. So this part, if you ask me the question, it is in the technology study. Then, Thanks for the presentation. It was very clear to understand. My question is that, are you collaborating with any brands like H&M, Zara, Gucci? Because of South Asian countries, it is easy to implement any new technology if the things are referred by brands office. Very, very good question. I appreciate this question because... Of course, we are working together with the brands and the brands are also supporting and appreciating our technology in different type of exhibition. We do have the meetings with the brands like in ITMA. We had several uh, brand meeting. Then uh, I was last month, I was in Indo Intertex in Jakarta where we had uh, uh, different brands with whom we discussed and definitely here now again that we are conducting the meetings and our brand is already started asking the manufacturer to look for the alternate technologies now it is also one of the uh, say responsibility and obligation of the brand as well that when they are also looking for sustainable fabric. They are also caring for the mother art. So they are also uh, recommending to the manufacturers different technology. We thank to the brands and we are open to collaborate with uh, other brands and retailers. And we they are all welcome to our headquarters in Stuttgart in Germany. We have a lab line. We have different facilities to show to the brands so that brands can understand this is a ongoing process. Different brands are visiting us and they are taking the feedback from us and then they are also recommending to the uh, final fabric manufacturers. But our doors are open. All the new brands and the retailers are welcome to our premises to discuss to discover and to implement. Thank you for this question. Any more questions, Lucy? I think that's all we've got time for now. So thank you so much, Jayanta, and thank you everyone for our audience and for the questions you've submitted. Uh, please know that this has been recorded and a recording link will be sent to you guys um, within a week of today. So thanks again and thank you so much, Jayanta. Everyone enjoy the rest of You're your day. You're welcome. And also, I thank Witten for this, for uh, broadcasting, organizing this type of webinar for the social awareness and also uh, not only for the business, but also as a commitment uh, for this 2030 target of 50% carbon dioxide reduction. Thank you very much, Lucy and your colleagues from Witten. And thanks all the viewer, all the listener of the webinar, Feel free to talk to me. Feel free to send me an email. If you have any question, I'm always there to support you, to give, to try to give to you the reply to your questions and to help you to together so that we can have 
a better future tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.